Dr. Bailey Price was really a pioneer in mathematics and in mathematics education. He served the University of Kansas for about 38 years, and 19 of those years he was chair of the mathematics department. In uh, World War II, he was a statistician, and he used a slide rule to help improve bombing accuracy for runs over, uh, over Europe for the Allies. In his time at KU, he authored or co-authored about five books, and one of those books was The History of the Mathematics Department, which runs about 780 pages of really interesting reading. He was familiar with computers that had been created at Harvard University and at Princeton, and he knew they would be important to the University of Kansas, so he helped to create the Computation Center in the mid-1950s because he knew it would be important to faculty for their research. Uh, I had a slide rule like this to help me with my work. As I said, we were a big, important Air Force, but the tools that we had in the computing direction were crude in the extreme. We had uh, some simple desk calculators, little Monroe calculators with small keyboards. And the whole outfit, 80 or 85 people, we had one free desk calculator with automatic multiplication and division. Remarkable machine. Slow, grind away with a lot of gears and things in there. It was noisy. And finally, we'd come out with an answer. <laughs> <laughs> so there were needs on campus. And uh, there, at that time, 1956, there were a group of uh, people on campus that were saying, we need one here. The only stumbling block was it took money to get one. But when I went over to see uh, Leon Cohen, he said, you know, the National Science Foundation is making some grants to help universities get computers. And he told me all about it. He said, our advisory committee is going to meet in about three weeks' time, and if you'll get a proposal in, I think I could get you some money to help buy your machine. Well, I returned to, to Lawrence and uh, gave this information around, and we all got real busy in about two weeks' time. We had a proposal in, asking for some money to help us buy our first computer. Well, now we've got an installation, an IBM 650 installation, and nobody on campus knew how to run it. <laughs> I am extremely honored that the Computer Center is dedicated to Dr. Price. The reason for that is Dr. Price launched a new era for the University of Kansas and opened a world of possibilities when he first introduced that IBM 650. Today, we follow his lead in exploring new and innovative ways to help KU faculty, KU staff, and KU students achieve their administrative, academic, and research goals. Dr. Price's legacy extends far beyond the wires, the switches, and the vacuums of that first computer. Today, it extends beyond the boundaries of our campus. His legacy at KU is seen in the research discoveries that changed the world. Although the construction began in 1977, Dr. Price laid that cornerstone in 1956 with that very first computer. Good afternoon, everyone. This is quite a full house. It's wonderful to have so many friends here on this special occasion. Welcome to the moment, in any case, to the KU Computer Services facility. Uh, this building opened in 1978, and for the past 36 years, it's had the misfortune of being nameless. So that's why we're <laughs> gathered here today, namely to correct that oversight. The Computer Center, as it's widely known, was itself an expansion. Uh, for KU's first computation center was established in Summerfield Hall in 1960. Now, 
we're very proud of the visionary IT leadership we have here today. But even back then, IT was definitely forward thinking in terms of getting out of Summerfield as fast as they could. <laughs> and they, they did that for almost four decades before the School of Business will. And um, what they did was move into this building and establish this computation center. The location of the first computation center, as I mentioned, Summerfield Hall, was actually selected by a committee chaired by G. Bailey Price. So it's especially appropriate that today we gather to name this building in his name in honor of the man responsible for so much of the early history of computing at KU. And you just saw a lot of that history on the screen in terms of that computing background at KU. It begins with Price's leadership in acquiring the university's first computer, an IBM 650. And as is often the case with new things at KU, the early history involved a lot of moving around. Uh, perhaps this sounds familiar to a lot of you who are currently at KU. Uh, the IBM 650 was originally installed in Strong Hall in room 9, complete with luxurious window air conditioning cooling. And I think those same units are still there today, so <laughs> after this ceremony you can go visit those. Um, but it was soon moved to Bailey Hall, a different Bailey and then moved in 1960 to Summerfield Hall, and then replaced in 1962 with the latest model, the magnetic tape system IBM 1620. All of those systems have less computing power than what I have right now in my Fitbit that I'm wearing right now. Uh, the chairmanship of the Computation Center Committee was, of course, not uh, Professor Price's primary responsibility. And it was certainly, and it is certainly not the sole reason that we're honoring him today in this naming ceremony. Professor Price, as Chancellor Hemingway noted on Professor Price's passing in 2006, was, and I quote, a legendary professor at KU, known for his keen mind and his recognition back in the 1950s that technology would be a major influence in how we learn and how we teach. Professor Price was the chair of the Department of Mathematics for 19 years, and he was a member of the faculty at KU for 38 years, from 1937 to 1975. In 1970, he was named the E.B. Stouffer Distinguished Professor of Mathematics at KU, and he retired as Distinguished Professor Emeritus. In the late 50s and early 60s, Dr. Price was instrumental in founding the conference board of the mathematical sciences, and he served as its first chair and first executive secretary. In 1970, he received the Mathematical Association of America's award for distinguished service to mathematics, recognizing him for establishing three major groups. One is the mathematical reviews, which still exists. One is an NSF Summer Institutes for Mathematics Teachers program, which is still going in another name. And uh, finally, the School Mathematics Study Group, which has since turned into the Math Help Room, which is an open, open tutoring uh, center for students. In 2004, Dr. Price established the Coralie Beers Price Teaching Professorship of International Cultural Understanding in honor of his, of his wife, a devoted and honored member of the KU English and Classics departments. Coralie Price received her PhD from Stanford, actually at a time when very few women received PhDs, and she was universally described as a role model and mentor to her students. The next year, 2005, Dr. Price also established a fund at KU to support graduate students interested in archival research or becoming librarians. The year before, a gift to KU Endowment created the G. Bailey Price Professorship in Mathematics and the G. B Bailey Price Award for Excellence in Teaching is given today annually by graduate students to a faculty member in mathematics. And finally, I have to admit, I have a personal connection with Dr. Price's early history. I'm wearing a tie, by the way, in binary, and I'm, <laughs> I'm happy that most of you are too far to read what it says because uh, 
I'd rather not say, in polite company. But another connection is that earn, after earning his PhD in mathematics at Harvard in 1932, his first position was as a faculty member of the faculty at Brown University. And as I noted earlier, Cora Lee Price earned her PhD from Stanford. And I, happy to say, I started my academic career as a professor at Brown, and my office was across the street from where his office was, and now actually the math department is in the same building I used to be in at Brown. And of course, I got my PhD from Stanford, so it's an honor for me to be part of this ceremony here today. But before we continue with the program today, I want to give special thanks to Jerry Niebaum, who you saw in the program before, and Jerry's seated right here. Uh, Jerry is a former assistant vice provost for information services at KU. He retired in 2004, and on behalf of the Endicott Society, he submitted the proposal that resulted in the naming of this facility in G. Bailey Price's honor. Uh, Jerry also put together the slideshow that was playing earlier. You saw him and heard him in the video, and I think it's appropriate that we all recognize Jerry with a round of applause. <laughs> and now, please join me in welcoming our current IT leader, Bob Lim, Chief Information Officer at KU. Thank you, Jeff. I'm proud to join the Chancellor and the Provost to welcome everybody here and the Price family to this special event. Um, nearly 60 years ago, Dr. Price saw the future in a new machine that was destined to change the world. Um, in bringing the first computer in, in, to KU in 1957, Dr. Price laid the cornerstone for information technology on our campus. Since then, technology has played an increasing role in helping the university uh, shape and educate its leaders, and also make discoveries that change the world. Dr. Price was an innovator, and his vision lived in the four thinking professionals that are in this building today, the KU Information Technology staff. Uh, we are constantly, they are constantly looking for new and emerging technology solutions to meet the present and future needs of the university community, which is our customers. We're here to support and keep pace with a rapid changing technology, and our IT organization continually evolves to do that. We are a strategic partners to our customers. We identify and implement innovative solutions to meet their needs and help them achieve their, achieve their academic, their administrative, and professional goals. In addition to that, we're also collaborating with our campus partners on bold aspirations and changing for excellence that are designed to make the university achieve its vision of being recognized as a top tier international research institution. It is an honor to work in this building that now bears Dr. Price's name. Construction in this building started over 37 years ago when he first brought the first computer to KU. It was designed and built home for the IT staff and the system um, on our campus. Today, the Price Computing houses over 13,000 servers, excuse me, 1,300 servers. <laughs> <laughs> We're reaching there. <laughs> and more than 200 IT staff members. Uh, from this building, we support over 30,000 customers and we also manage over 90,000 unique devices across our campus. In short, it's the, hub, um, it's the hub of information on our campus that connects our KU faculty, our KU staff, and our KU students around the world. In the new Pricing com uh, Computing Center, we, and I say we as an IT staff, will continue to work diligently to carry out his legacy of innovation with the mission of bringing new technology that would transform the University of Kansas, the state, and the world. Thank you very much, and I'd like to introduce um, Chancellor Gray Little.
I'm not Chancellor Graylow, by the way, <laughs> but uh, we're, we're adapting as we go along here. Uh, I do want to take this opportunity. It's my great pleasure to introduce two of Bailey and Coralie's six children who will share a few thoughts on behalf of the family. First is uh, Griffith Price. He's the one boy in the family. Uh, the only uh, child, by the way, who does not have a KU degree, so we're working on that. Uh, uh, Griffith holds a Bachelor of Law degree from New York University's Law School and is a member of the New York and District of Columbia Bars. He's a retired partner and senior counsel at Finnegan LLP, an international law firm specializing in intellectual property law. Like her mother, Coralie Kluge, holds a PhD from Stanford and is a professor of German at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So now please help me welcome Griffith and Coralie. Thank you, Provost Vicker, uh, Chancellor Graylittle, uh, and uh, Chief Information Officer Lim, uh, members of the faculty, friends, family, and guests. I'm really honored today to say a few words about my father at this dedication ceremony for the Price Computing Center. Uh, first, I do however, want to join in thanking uh, Professor Niebaum for all the work that he did in initiating and pursuing the proposal uh, to name this building after 34 years of neglect. <laughs> <laughs> How did Bailey Price know in the mid-1950s that KU needed a computer. That was at the very dawn of the computer age. At that time, no one in the general public and almost no one in the academic world realized what computers would become. Even some of the leaders of the computer industry did not believe they had much future. There was resistance among so-called pure mathematicians to the use of computers to prove or disprove solutions to long-standing problems such as the four-color theorem. And when that theorem was proved through the use of computers in 1976, many mathematicians refused to accept the proof because it could not be replicated, so to speak, by hand. <laughs> Outside the defense establishment, where computers were used for cryptographic analysis, ballistic calculations, and the like, computers were not even common in engineering, applied mathematics, or the sciences. In that milieu, how did Professor Price come to the conviction that KU had to have one. Even as far back as the 1930s, he may have known of the seminal work of Alan Turing on the basic theory of digital computation. We know, thanks in part to Professor Niebaum, that during or shortly after World War II, he became familiar with the wartime use of computers in code breaking, <coughs> and Turing's participation in that work at Bletchley Park in England. After the war, he followed the developments of others who contributed to the rapid evolution of computer theory and design. He saw the Aiken Mark I at Harvard, a mechanical computer, and von Neumann's electronic computer at the Institute for Advanced Studies at Princeton. Years later, in 2002, my son Andrew and I accompanied him on a visit to Bletchley Park after attending a reunion of 8th Army Air Force veterans in England. He was 97 years old at the time. He was fascinated there with the Colossus machine 
that was on display at Bletchley Park. Here are photos of him and me at the door of the mansion at Bletchley Park, and of him with one of the museum docents standing in front of the Colossus, the first electronic digital computer in the world. Uh, you'll notice, just as a quick aside, that even as a tourist, he wore a coat and tie. <laughs> <laughs> but Professor Price's vision extended also into the future, not just the history of computers. He had no special crystal ball, and he could not have known 60 years ago how pervasive the influence of computers in our lives would become. <laughs> but he knew they would be useful and would serve the future needs of KU and its community. And that was enough for him. The potential usefulness of computers was his touchstone, and he therefore knew that he wanted KU to have one. He knew that computers had been used in wartime, but he also foresaw that they, like many other swords, could be beaten into plowshares. He knew that the natural and applied sciences required analysis and manipulation of voluminous empirical data. And he foresaw that digital computers could replace the rooms full of so-called human computers, cranking the handles of mechanical Burroughs calculating machines. So he foresaw that when KU's IBM 650 was installed in the basement of Strong Hall, members of the physics, chemistry, astronomy, and other departments, as well as mathematicians, at least the mathematicians who accepted them, would flock to use it. And they did. When I was still in high school, he helped me get a part-time job working there, entering data on an IBM key punch machine. I don't know what KU's nepotism policy was back then, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure the statute of limitations has run on it by now. <laughs> so I know how popular the 650 was with members of those departments. There was a long waiting line, despite the then enormous charge of $60 an hour for its time. There was a long waiting line because of its usefulness to their disciplines. That small beginning put KU at the forefront of the use of computers in the academic world and has grown into the Price Computing Center as a consequence of his vision. Let me close with a few personal remarks. Many of my earliest memories, now from almost 70 years ago, involve KU. The university has been a constant in my life and the life of my sisters and many others in our family for many decades. We are Jayhawks. And we're proud and honored that our father's lifelong commitment to the university has been recognized this way. Thank you. Is this right? Can you hear me? Yes. Chancellor Gray Little, Provost Vitter, Chief Information Officer Lynn, fellow Jayhawks, because I really <laughs> am one. <laughs> Family, friends, and others who are here today to honor my father and dedicate this building not only to his memory, to the past, but also to the continuation of the work he played a part in to the future. Thank you for allowing me to say a few words at this event. 
I well remember the IBM 650 in the basement of Strong Hall, which was installed the same year I entered KU as a freshman. I was not impressed. <laughs> it was an industrial looking and sounding machine, and its capabilities described to me in terms of how fast it could calculate the value of pi and to how many places left me perplexed. I did not see why we needed this. Professor Price, however, held good innovative tools in high respect, and he knew that KU needed a computer. He also knew that not only number crunching was at stake here, but rather something called data processing. And this was useful in ways that soon even I could understand. With the computer, for example, KU became one of the first educational institutions to move toward today's online enrollment systems. By the end of the 1950s, KU students chose their classes by selecting key punch cards and turning them in, a little job which usually took them only about 20 minutes. Literally overnight, between enrollment and the beginning of classes, and thanks to the stat services and the computer, class rosters, student schedules, and grade sheets were all printed and sorted and ready. Nearly a decade later, when I started at the University of Wisconsin, enrollment there was still in the dark ages. Even at KU, things did not always go smoothly. I remember the time when the carbon paper removing machine malfunctioned and the registrar's office wound up waist deep in the old fashioned dirty stuff. <laughs> Theoretically, the computer was performing perfectly, but in practice, difficulties could still arise. There were many other aspects to Professor Price's career. I will name just three examples, all of which illustrate what I believe was his foremost goal, namely to help mathematicians share their knowledge and pass their skills on into the future. First, from the beginning he was involved in efforts to establish and maintain contacts between mathematicians and to disseminate information on a worldwide basis about research in the field. In 1939, he helped to found and then wrote numerous reviews for the abstracting journal, Mathematical Reviews, which has already been mentioned. Still published today by the American Mathematical Society, such a forum had become necessary when World War II impeded Americans' access to European scientific journals. With the help of computers, the entire run of this journal has been available online for many years to Professor Price's delight and in fully searchable format. Second, Professor Price's organizational and leadership role in early years of the Conference Board of the Mathematical Sciences, which is mentioned on the new plaque at the entrance of the building, was motivated by a similar desire to promote understanding, discussion, and cooperation between mathematicians, mathematical organizations, and those who needed their services. Third, his work with the so-called new math, or revolution in school mathematics, which included, which included teaching nationally televised early morning courses on the Continental Classroom Program, was his contribution to the modernization of math education. The aim of this effort was to create a new and better trained cohort of scientists for the years to come. <coughs> Professor Price often said that he was no good at looking into the future, that he could not foretell what would be achieved even in the next few years. One thing he was quick to recognize, however, was that the introduction of the computer was a major turning point in the 20th century. He remained flexible and open to innovation, and he supported the interdisciplinary cooperation necessary for computer development between individuals and between academic units that were once discrete. 
mechanical and electrical engineers, applied and theoretical mathematicians, programmers, thinkers, and dreamers of all kinds. Professor Price was not one who could easily be surprised, but he would have been astonished by the honor that is bestowed upon him today. And with genuine humility, he would pass on to you the work to which he contributed and insist that the Price Computing Center be dedicated to you and your undertakings. Thank you. I would now like to invite the real Chancellor, Bernadette Gray Little, to make closing remarks. Good afternoon. From everything we've heard today, I believe that we can all agree that Professor Price was a remarkable person. Of the things that the provost mentioned, a few things about him uh, be earlier in the program, these are things that I have heard about his accomplishments, his teaching, his publication, but I'm not sure that anything is more remarkable than the turnout this afternoon. It is a living testimony to what he has meant to the university, to what he has meant to so many departments around here. So thank you for being here today. His legacy will continue to live on, not only in the name of this building, but also in the impact that he had on mathematics and countless students and colleagues. And again, your presence is testimony to that. His legacy will live on in computing at KU and will live on in his family, many of whom are with us today. You have met his son Griffith and his daughter Coralie, but also with us today are other members of his family. And I'd like to introduce them. Lucy Price, who's Professor Emerita at Baker University. Lucy. Lucy holds a doctorate from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Edwina Price Isert. Edwina? Here. Edwina holds a master's degree in Germanic languages and literatures from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Sally Diane Price Fukunaga, who's over here. Sally holds a doctorate in music theory from KU. Doris Price Burgert. <laughs> Doris is an instructor in educational psychology at Wichita State University and holds master's degrees in literature and education from Wichita State. Would all the members of the extended Price family with us today please stand and be recognized. I understand that all of you, including for the day, Griff, our Jayhawks, uh, we're allowing you in today. Um, it all began with G. Bailey Price and Coralie Beers Price, married in June 1940, and they moved to Lawrence to start what would become a remarkable heritage. We have one important piece of business left to take care of to honor that legacy and that heritage before we will go to the reception in the lobby. And I'm going to ask Bob if he will join me and come over to the plaque that will be hung just inside the door. Thank <laughs> you. 